Important game for the Div 12 Resis today as they are attempting to win five games in a row and solidify their spot in the finals race. There's four games remaining in the season. We are playing last on the ladder today. We then play first and second. And to finish off, we play sixth, who beat us by 10 goals earlier in the season. We've won four in a row, but we have to keep banking wins in order to play in the finals. If you've been enjoying the Div 12 Resi's Waddle Park season, please subscribe down below so you don't miss any future episodes coming up. A lot of ins and outs this week. So in for the Waddle Park animals are Andy Munro, Roaming Has, Seji Tok, and the Davis family. So Jared Davis is playing with his dad and all his brothers. It's a bit of a LeBron and Bronny setup. Father and son in the same game. It's super exciting to have the Davises in the forward line this week. On the outs, though, we have lost Cookson for the week, Rogie and Will Taylor. A few recruits in this week. We've got Andy Munro from Narrow Court. We've got Roaming Has from the Div 12 Resi's Junior Academy. We had to get a special permit from the VAFA to play a nine-year-old in our team, but we, we got that ticked off, so. Well, I was actually a little bit nervous because even though Check had told me midweek um, that I was playing, there was still a little part of me that thought, is he just going to dog me here and not pick me? we got Rodder on the wing, on the other wing, from the Under-9s Academy, it's Roman Has. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was great to hear my name, playing for the first time in, what, five years. So, yeah, that was super exciting. Morning, boys. Good morning. Hey, Let's do it for a swim. We're just going to have a swim. <laughs> Olympic trials on some rocket rooftop, baby. Let's go. Good morning. What's happening here? Oh, I'm not behind the camera this week. Yeah. It's a strange feeling. A lot of pressure, though. So I've asked all year to play, and if I don't perform, I'm going to be clown. Very different team today, Checkers. Good looking team. So Davis, 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 Jarrah Davis. I hope there's more than one Davis because he told me there's a few, so I just put them all in the middle. Um, yeah, how we, how we, how's the vlog been? It's been a week. Are they sick of us yet? They've been like, oh, we tuned out. We're watching Prime Trains now. We're not watching Caden anymore. He didn't upload last week. Just went on the went on the bounce. And we've got Roaming Has, who just played in the uh, Year Two Three school footy this morning, and he's come all the way from there to fill in <coughs> to fill in for us. So you know, pretty lucky to have like a school an eight year old just come here and, and fill out. Uh, we've got Jarrah's dad. What else we got? We got Seji Top just here. So this is the new Connor Rogers. Um, we got rid of one half Filipino. We sent him to the Gold Coast. We got another half Filipino bloke filling in. Whole family's coming down today. How are we feeling? Nervous. I'm scared for not myself. I'm scared for the trainers. Uh, none of these three have played footy in a really long time. So I don't know if the hamstrings are going to hold up on a cold, wintry, wet sort of day. But. Um, they made their bed, so they got to line it now. To be honest, I've woken up on the right side of the bed. Sometimes with the 9.20 games, you can go back to the other vlogs. I'm a walking zombie. I don't want to be here. It's freezing, it's muddy outside, but I'm actually pumped. We've got the young man on debut. Hi, mate. If you're out there, who's going to be doing the vlogging? Came to training on Thursday. It was really good. Like, I was actually very impressed. I had, like, I had... <laughs> I know. I, don't, I was very surprised. I hadn't gone to a training in five years. This is my first game in five years. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played since I was 12 years old. That's crazy. Back then, you would have been watching Cad McDonald on the Friday night and tuning in. Uh, <laughs> Full of himself. <laughs> no, nah, we're pumped. Pumped for today. We've got the whole Davis family playing, which is outrageous. But um, super excited and yeah, we'll hopefully get the four points. Can we watch any please, mate? Looking forward. Oh yes, I am. A little bit nervous, so, but. Not, I've played one game of footy recently, so it shouldn't be as bad. I'm just going to kick five. This boat's <laughs> going to kick five. Should get maybe a couple goals. I'll be happy with that. More than one this time. Hey, check, check just didn't wake up this morning? No, well, no. Yeah, it just didn't wake up this morning. All the boys got up early. I wasn't up early either, but I was up ready to go. Um, yeah, just didn't wake up in time. That's okay, we're here now. We weren't late. We're on time just, but yeah, not good. Not a good way to start the day. Lenny, not as warm as Bali, is it? I oh, know. Why'd they have to move this game so freaking early? I'm, I'm full on, I'm full on as tired as anything. When'd you get home? Um, I got home, I got home Thursday. Like, almost, well, technically Friday. Oh, 
Do you has? Thank you, Len. You read the bottom? Yeah. Pass. Under here. No way. There's a hat for you. No way. I love the Lenny hat. That. Oh. Open it up. Dave, open it up. Oh, here we go. Oh, no way. Is this one of the big blow up Mr. Lewis's? Yeah. I used to have one of the Cereoli ones, these, and I popped it because I tackled him too many times. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, Len. Come here. We've spoken recently about Baz being late. I spoke to Baz and I said, oh, what time are you getting to the ground? We've got to be there at 8.20. And he replied, I'm setting my alarm at 8.20. And I said, that just leaves you no wriggle room. Like, I understand that you have decided to get to the ground 20 minutes before we start. But if you sort of rest the eyes for five and blink and you miss it, all of a sudden you wake up and the game started. Well, long story short, Bailey McCabe didn't wake up till 9.16. The game started at 9.20. Trey, it's uh, just past 8.45. Bailey's on here. Predictions on the arrives. Uh, 8.57. He gets it. 8.57. you. Oh, uh, 9. No, I'll say in five minutes. What's the time? 8.45. It's about 8.47 now. I reckon about 8.55. It'd be good. Yeah. Game's at 9.20. I reckon you'll get here at 9.30. <laughs> that's, that's crazy, man. Predictions? Um... 902. I think it's a post nine job. I think it's a 903. I completely forgot about that. He's got to play. Um, maybe we'll get in like 15 minutes before the game. Um, hopefully soon. <laughs> It'd be good if he's here. I remember the, the people were running the board took his magnet off and tried to replace him. I said, no, nah, I don't do that. Baz will be here. Baz always gets here. He'll be here late. He'll be here right before the bounce. He's not going to not show. Shit. But he's going to show real late. And then running out into the field, we actually lined up with 17 on the field before the ball bounced. And I was like, shit, better grab one off the bench and pull them on because Bailey McCabe's not here. We may have... We may have set a new record. The game started at 9.20. It's currently 9.24. We're not even close. We're not even close. It's the latest that Baz has ever rocked up to the footy. And he actually got to the game at quarter time, Bailey McCabe, you've got a lift, son. Yeah, so we couldn't train here on Tuesday because the ground was sodden. Oh, no. And then Thursday when we did train, we couldn't go on a certain patch, which is this patch right here. So in front of you, there's going to be some wet individuals. Replacing C. Rog, how are you yeah. going to go today, mate? Like for like swap. I'm expecting at least 40. Yeah. <laughs> they might not be handy touches, but they'll be there. <sighs> Nervous. First game of footy in since 2014. It's terrible. Any niggling injuries that might appear today? Uh, I don't have anything that's in good condition. <laughs> 26 years since my last game. Oh, that's so it. looking forward to it. It's a long pre-season. Long pre-season. Yeah. So we'll see how we go. What could go wrong? Most excited to play with? Uh, it would have been Will Taylor, but he's out of action. How do you reckon you'll go to that? Uh, pretty good. Played much footy in your time? Nah. <laughs> I don't know the rules. <laughs> I don't know the rules, so. You're gonna out your brother today? Uh, yeah, he's he. been doing it for know, junior career, so. Just trying to. Premier Data's gonna tell you. Just showing him who's, who's boss again. It's been, what, eight years, so we'll work it out. Uh, Andy Munger has come from Narrow Court, so it's a long run. Where's the child at? Growing house? Uh, smaller than Lenny. I'm a child. Yeah. Uh, Romeo has playing his first game as well. He's here every week watching us, so he finally gets a gig. He's smaller than me. <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah. Uh, all I can say is if it does get easy going, let's not fight the forward line. It just gets messy like that. It's already wet. You'll get heaps of cheap touches. If you're all these defenders and stuff, I don't want to move the magnets, but it would be this zone here, and this zone here, and I when Bailey gets here at 9.30, but people like Dan and Mick probably just yell out between yourselves and grab a zone, so make sure you got half the defenders here, half the defenders here, and a couple in the middle, and, and we'll just lock it in. Six, five, four, The old Davis family actually lined up in the midfield for the first contest of the day. It was Jarry in the ruck, 
his two brothers and his dad are crumbing at his feet. Then they find the fairy tale way to all get inside the forward line, and within a minute, kicking the first goal as a family. So it was the Davis show early on. I was hoping we could get Stewie on the scoreboard early because he was saying his body might not hold up for the entire game. So Jarrah takes a mark at the top of the goal square. As he's going back to the top of his mark, his dad wheels around and Jarrah doesn't handball it. He literally places it in his dad's hand. Questionable hand pass. Don't know how much hands were connected to that, that hand pass. Looked more like a little give or throw. Um, luckily, no DRS on that one, and, and the goal, goal stood, and Stewie Davis kicks the first goal for the Animals. Myself and Haz have a bit of a Bruce and Guinea connection. Man, he was a, a little whippet early. He was in and around it, getting holding the balls. Um, I, I haven't laid a tackle all season, so it was incredibly surprising to see him go out there and, and lay some tackles. He went for mark of the year right in front of me. Um, almost brought it down, sat on some old bloke's head. So from that point forward, I knew that I was in good hands in the forward line. Pre-game, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I, I could be a chance here because looking at the pecking order, I didn't think there was too many people out on the pitch that would be able to get themselves up and about for a hanger. So I'm like, if I see the opportunity, I'll take it, but I didn't think I'd get a ball that would sit perfectly for me. And the ball comes into the forward 50, and I'm like, oh, here we go, this is my chance. And saw the opportunity, got up on his back, the ball just went over my hands, but if I'd taken it, oh my goodness gracious me, would have been mark of the year. Andy Munro, so he is someone who makes uh, TikToks about jumpers and he's a bit of a football historian. Um, he surprised me in the biggest game of Div 12 resis for the Elizabeth Eagles and kicked a great snag running to the boundary, a, a snap around the body. And I looked at him and I thought, man, Andy is a bit of a crafty forward. He's got some skills to pay the bills. So when he came down into the forward line on Saturday, took a mark. I was really confident that he would kick it. Um, but no, he's, he's quite strong working on the farm. He's got some good pipes, got some good kicking skills. I think I've seen him kicking the footy at the silos and with the lambs and stuff. So bring some good good energy to the zoo. Bringing the farmer into the zoo was a quite, a, quite a special moment as well. We're playing with Sala, we fought on four goals. We're playing the exact opposite of the game plan we're trying to play when we play fast golf, fast footy, all right? Which is, it should be the fastest, easiest day ever. It's a little bit wet, but as soon as it gets wet, we freak out and start changing all our zones and changing our game plan. Fuck, straight down the line. Why are we? Why is the ball out here every time? Why is the ball here, here, here? If you're, if you're running to those pockets, I'll drag you, all right? Stop <laughs> running to the pockets. We don't want to play any of this dead space. It shouldn't be in our D50. It shouldn't be down there. It's down there because we're fucking around with 16 ambles in the pockets. Don't, don't, stay out of the pockets. Inboard, straight down to Caden, straight down to Andy, straight down to Jarrah's dad. There's some big bodies down there. Lock it in the 50, and then we, we just spread the 50 arc, mark, arc, right? That's the whole game plan today. It won't be the game plan every week, but when it comes to finals and we need to kick six in the last, we'll need to pull this one out, all right? We'll need to learn it. Bailey McCabe, I don't know where he is now, but he literally just rocked up. He might be in the change rooms warming up, but Bailey McCabe got here at quarter time. That record won't be broken for the rest of the year, I hope. I love when we kick to the club room and for some reason, it's one of my favourite ends to play on. Um, I think it was Jarrah was coming through and kicked it over the top. I got back shoulder on my opponent and worked him under the footy. And I worked him under the footy and probably could have gone the mark, but I allowed the ball to skip along uh, towards the club rooms so I could follow it up. I gained possession running straight to the club rooms. If this had gone through, there would have been a bit of a celebration and I would have gotten up and about. Um, I went the snap across the body and off the boot, I'm like, oh, this is home. This is a beautiful kick. And it just gravitated towards the post, slammed into the post. And I was absolutely gutted because as I was saying earlier, it felt like an almost game early. And to not capitalize on one of those, which I feel like as a small forward should be your bread and butter, was very disappointing. Yeah, the center circle became quicksand. Getting it out the middle became very hard getting the midfielders, the ball was just hitting the deck and, and getting stuck in the mud. So it was quite literally like being back in year three. Probably roaming has territories actually being back in year three, but playing the game stuck in the mud. Um, well, I initially started on the wing for the second quarter and then a little bit through got moved down to the forward line. So I didn't really understand how bad the conditions were until I headed down that end 
and I got into the forward line. I think it was about straight in front, 40 out, and it's just it's just mud. It was an absolute paddock. There's there's not many places worse to play football than in an area that's just like that. The boots just sunk into the ground. They were going metres underneath the surface, and yeah, it just wasn't great. We need a little bit more of this in our forward line. Roaming has injected some front half pressure, locked it in, got a great hold in the ball. Pre-game at training on Thursday night, Roaming has said to me, Checkers, if I kick five goals this week, I get to play again next week. He didn't kick. He didn't get near it in the first quarter, really, around the goals, but in the second quarter, kicks his first, and I was like, oh, four more to go, and I'm going to have to pick this bloody pain in the ass. Oh, I didn't really get the chance to be nervous because as I'm going back on my mark, the umpires looked at me, told me to... Shuffle across, so I'm like, oh, it's okay. But then I've re- then I've realised I'm just not in line with the goal. So the defender, he he's standing in line with the points. The umpires just moved me maybe about two metres across, and I'm facing the out of bounds. So it was really awkward. But then people were just saying, just go kick it, kick it. They're going to call play on. So without even thinking, just went straight into it and just kicked it. <laughs> little secret hack hopefully other teams don't watch these vlogs I know they do which is unfortunate but uh if that ball's getting balled up inside 50 I'm coming in hot trying to take the ball out of the ruck and kick myself a cheeky snag it's the easiest gameplay ever but I saw McDonald at the back tried to put it over the top just didn't put enough mayo on it and uh made it a little bit contested for him so not probably could have put another five meters on that kick and he would have been fine but just didn't get enough boot on it and sort of like Jeremy Cameron on Friday night where he just picked it up, got tackled and snapped it over his head. That's what I did. I picked it up, got boot to ball as I was getting tackled to the ground and it just had enough air to float over the top. So at halftime, I'm stuck on two goals. We've been a little bit poor, um, but yeah, we go into halftime knowing that there's probably a lot of improvement yet to come in this second half. Mate, you know what I'm going to ask? No, I've got no idea what you've got to ask, brother. Uh, what, what, what time did we rock up? What time did I rock up or what time did I wake up? <laughs> what time did you wake up? I woke up at 9.16 with a game start time of 9.20 and I just conceded the fact that I wasn't going to play the first quarter. And I didn't. Bit of an almost game at the moment. We've got to get it inside 50 longer. No one's out marking us. We might not be marking it, but just get it in. Uh, we're handballing. We're trying to pick off little 45s. It is that deep of mud. we just got to get it in. So turn and go. Um, yeah, me personally, I feel like I'm having an almost game. Like it's a bit wet, a bit slippery. I, I thought I'd kick that snap on the run, hit the post, but. Um, we're not going to rock a rooftop. Unless we kick 20 goals. Do you guys even want to go to Nationals? <laughs> you guys can go! This bike's 29. Surprisingly better than I thought they were going to go. Like, the game's not great. Doing all right. It's a, it's a contested game, so it probably helps their lack of fitness a little bit. But they're pretty hard at it. Like, he's, he's, he's got a few tackles in there. He's, pretty, he's got more tackles than I have so far, so it's, it's a good start. Still going to play the middle. I think we had less people running in the pocket. We didn't have enough, like... Crumbing in the middle. A few times I saw Mick or Dan or the people that said I'm looking for a kick. If we put Max, Jarrah, myself, Bailey, Zach, someone tall in that middle line in that spine, and all the crummers come in, even if we, it's, it's me on two and we've got five crummers coming in, we can sort of trust that we're going we're gonna to win that ball, yeah? But when it's just, you know, it's a Max on three and no crummers around him, you're not, you're not going to choose him, so we still end up going to the boundary. So there's people coming in the middle, but they're not enough, all right? All right? So, <coughs> I think you're half a sniff to put on the boot, put on the boot. Don't, don't, don't be like, oh, I'm going to be unselfish here and try to find a runner. Just, just kick it. This is no offence to Masala, but they're bottom of the ladder and they've been losing games by 100 points plus. We need to boost our percentage. Everyone was looking for cheap touches. Everyone was looking for cheap goals and no one was willing to put their head over it and, and, and play the game plan that we put in place. So a little bit annoying coming off as a coach. Um, it's a hard one because we're up. We're not going to lose the game and you don't want to really want to spray blokes when we're... We're going to win a game. You can't really spray people for winning, but we needed the percentage, and, and that was more important than winning the game for us. So I think Has spoke about how sometimes you can go into games and you'll get a thought in your head, what if it's just a day where it doesn't go near me? Like, what if it bounces the wrong way? What if I fumble it when I, when I need to grab it? What if I 
run into the wrong positions and it felt like I was having one of those days despite kicking two to half time. I don't know if he, uh, if he was sleeping in the same bed as Baz but slow start for McDonald out there against Masala. Uh, but second half was the Caden we know and love. The Caden we've been seeing all year. The, uh, the Tony Lockett, the Bailey Fritch, the Ben Brown. I'm trying to think of some more Melbourne players that kick goals. The Jacob Van Royen, the, uh, the David Neitz. He was putting on a David Neitz performance in the second half. Somebody had to step up. And uh, who better than the captain himself? He came out, led from the front, a couple early goals in that third quarter and just really kick-started the charge to take a massive lead against... Uh, what's it? What's Masala. When I woke up on Saturday morning, I sent a text to Checkers and Baz that I was watching Cosmic Picket Highlights uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning. So uh, when the ball got kicked in long, I probably should have taken the, the chest mark. I probably could have got a high free kick because the guy put his arm across my neck. Uh, when the ball hit the ground, I went Cosy mode. I overran the footy, tapped it between my legs, which sent three defenders going the wrong way. They were unaware that I tapped it through my legs. And by the time they realised I was out, I went to run directly at goals and slot it. But then this defender came and closed me down. So I had timed my running to a point where as he went to close me down, I had enough space to push off with the left and snap it around the body. And if I do say so myself, it's one of my favourite goals for the season. It had me absolutely pumped. And the animals are on a bit of a charge this term. I'm running into the 50. Have a good a good eyes at the goal. Um, here's some people screaming at me, you're hot, you're hot, you're hot. So just a little glance behind me. See a, a larger fella running behind me. And I'm like, just panic. Got the handball off before I got tackled, but probably could have had a shot there. But just kept following the ball and the ball got chipped back over to me. Um, for a nice set shot, but I ended up missing it. It just clipped the inside of the goalpost, which is just a little bit annoying because that could have been the opportunity for five goals, but uh, we didn't get onto it, but that's okay. This five goal has bet is really getting in my head. Do I take his magnet off the board? Do I bench him for the rest of the day? Do I put him down back? Because he's getting on the scoreboard and he's getting crafty. And if he kicks five... I have to give another game. It all starts to click. The midfield start getting the footy forward. The forwards start to, to function quite well. The Davises are applying great pressure. Roaming Hazard jumping on blokes. Andy Munro is providing a contest. And finally in this game, uh, we're, we're playing some animals footy, which is super exciting. And it's, it's looking like it could get out to a bit of a blowout in this second half. All right, bro. All right. Oh! oh. Had a little burst that term, kick two. Still feels like an almost day. <laughs> Dropped a couple of marks inside that 15 metre range. One was because of the sun, the other two, I don't know. Bit shit, bit soft, tried to let one through over the back so it could go through when I should just mark that. Um, I'm having an almost game. It's almost, almost good. I said at half time I'd love to mess around with the board a bit. Um, and we got the goals we need to, so now we can. We can have a little bit of fun. I'm going to see this quarter off. All right, good Lenny, you can come on if you want. <laughs> um, all right, so I want to go Harry, Caden and Munro up forward. Stewie Davis sitting in, in front of them, just in that half, in that, in that zone. We're going to look That's for Stewie, good. and then if it goes over the top of your head, we've got the three smalls crumming. So look for Stewie, see if we get a couple more goals. Maxie's going to the ruck. Bailey, Thorso and Smithy go in the middle. Good boy. Um, Trey and Sedge up forward, probably just providing just decoy forwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Joey Cowdo down back, and then yeah, I'll be on the bench. I'll be, be helping mess around with it a bit. So have a bit of fun. If there's somewhere you want to play or somewhere you want to swap with, just just go for it. All right, we've got the got the points in the bank now, so we can come away with a hundred point win. Okay, so make sure it goes hundred points, but have a bit of fun. Oh, look at this ball nine. This is <laughs> deadly. This is Kerno, Always Mackay. Gonna put on. 
Nice little five goal turn here. Oh, More. Six, 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 six goal turn. Work from there anyway. Four of those between, four of those between us. We're walking into a paddock. Look at this. This is a bad end of the ground. Let's just point the camera down. This, I, my, feet, yeah, my feet are sinking. My feet are sinking in the ground. I think Yobel's was in good nick actually, Dan. I think it looks great. So we've let's be it. thankful we're playing footy on a Saturday. Forward line at one point. It was pretty cool. I don't know if we've got any images of it, but we had Roaming Haz in a pocket, Caden McDonald at full forward, and Andy Munro on the other pocket. The three goal kicking gurus. If I ever had a goal kicking challenge and I didn't want blokes to win, I'd never invite those guys. They they know where the goals are. So we start the last quarter the way we finish the third. We're piling on goals. Um, the ball gets kicked inside 50 and someone overruns it and it literally just sits still in our forward line. So I run up, pick it up. There's no pressure at all. And I snap one of the easier goals I've kicked for the year. And I felt horrible because it was my fifth goal, but Shrey was literally right there. On my merit, it was probably okay to have the shot but I felt a bit guilty. But he's uh, completely burnt Shrey. But lucky enough, he got it through the big sticks because if he'd missed it, would it would not have been a good scene. But uh, he got the goal after all and got his fifth. What impressed me about Haz was his set shot. Looked really confident, kicked through the footy, connected well off the boot. Uh, he wasn't remotely a liability he was an asset on uh on saturday i felt like i was absolutely flying just a couple cheap goals one out the back um after dossie's uh dribble kick that i thought wasn't gonna make it might have burnt him there because i could have left it but probably would have been touched so we'll just leave that um and then another one from andy munro that's just he's just soccer kicked it I, I just fumbled a little bit, picked it up, just chucked it on the boot and it just went through. So I was absolutely flying, went over to Dossie, just had to let him know that I was, I was just knocking, knocking on the door for that uh, leading goal kicker for the day. But then Doss just, see, uh, in Doss fashion, he just runs away with it, um, kicking a few more for the afternoon. Flipping the Magnus was a bit funny. Just want to see how Baz and Dan Thorson went up forward. They've been stalwarts down back all year. Baz goes up forward, kicks a goal. Dan Thorson goes up forward, kicks three. Dossie kicks two. He's putting on his Jacob Van Royen performance. Ends up with six for the game. Dan Thorson turned into Chris Judd in the last quarter. He kicked two goals, four for the game. He's a backman and he's always very consistent for us. He's you know, one of the most consistent players for the water park animals, but he got two goals for and was just bursting out of the stoppages, slotting them from everywhere. And then Bailey McCabe, Sleepy McCabe, who missed the whole first quarter, uh, goes forward, kicks a goal. If you recall earlier in the season, he was kicking a goal a game. Um, he's obviously played some different roles in defence, begrudgingly, but done them quite well for us. So as much as he complains about them, he's going to get put there because he does the job pretty well. But it was awesome to see him go forward, kick a goal, get a lick of the ice cream. It ended up being a really emphatic performance for the animals. It's now five wins in a row. The lads are on fire. And with a couple of results over the weekend, it almost seals our fate in the finals. We just need one more win from our last three, which is coming up against some pretty tough opposition. But we've set ourselves up after our little run throughout the year to do some damage late. Do it, do it, do it. Another photo on our arm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It doesn't even matter when, I, when you come to the game. There he is, Daniel Sarr. Um, yeah, better second half by the team, I reckon. We got it in a lot quicker. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, it's coming. A little roamy has so. So the D's have Fritter. But they've also got little Colton Volstrop running around. What about Guinea? So they've got Luke Bruce, but they've got little Guinea running around. Um, how many do we get between us? Ten. Ten between us? That's not a little bit. Don't mind if we do. Oh, here you go. That's a nice cheeky day at the office. We've got our live with Lenny caps on. Um, Thank you! Out there. I loved it. You know, like I was talking to you before, when you quit footy every single year when the footy season comes back around, you have the itch to play again. For the past five years I haven't been able to do that. Doing it today was fantastic. So much fun. I think we I think we found one in has might have to sign him up for next season. I mean, I mean but give him a longer contract! <laughs> Um, but yeah, so stuck with that second half. We built into the game really well, and um, that margin reflects what we thought we could do in this game. It took a little bit in that first half to get going, but we finally got there, so happy days. Yeah, we're wet, gross. I think I smell, I don't know if I smell, I didn't shower this morning, or like, it's the ground, but good win. We'll see you next week, we'll cut four more points. So there you have it, the Wattle Park animals are sitting in third position on the ladder. We boosted the percentage as well, so we are flying five in a row. We're playing some good footy. It's a great time to be at the club at the moment, and everything's coming up Millhouse. The next couple of weeks are going to be a challenge and a half. We've got to win one of our last three to solidify our spot in finals, and we have some pretty tough games coming up. So stick around. Um, get excited for the journey, because if we could make finals, who knows what could happen to finish the season off. Once again, guys, I appreciate everyone tuning in. I appreciate all of the support. And we'll see you for some more content very, very soon. Cheers, guys.